Welcome to Chapter 7. Chapter 5 had my little 914. As the name suggests, this was an event that took place on the 14th of September 2010. Chapter 6 begins immediately. That, and goes up to early 2011 detailing what preceded my overdose, and my strange experiences in the hospital after that overdose. An ugly and unusual medical story. Here in chapters 7 and 8, I will be talking about somebody else who befits the caption doctors are killing me etc. That is just my personal opinion. That person was my dear friend, and has died. Regent Exeter born. Richard Lindsay in the UK who passed away at the hands of his doctor. I met Regent, born in 1959, in August of 2011 and he died in March 2014. There was a regular medical and non-medical evidence surrounding Regent's death. I took the non-medical evidence to an eminent lawyer who mourned. Regent as his crony, Regent had attended the prestigious Westminster School that only the wealthy could afford. The lawyer himself was older than Regent, and me, by several years, and had studied in another prestigious school in London. He had frequently played football with Regent's school. The lawyer consulted experts about what I should do with the evidence I had brought him. The experts advised him that I should take this evidence to the Uxbridge superintendent of police, along with a covering letter. If he took the case, that would be a way forward. If he did not, there was no higher law in the land to investigate this case. Regent was initially taught by Catholic priests at Westminster School. In those days, only boys could enroll at his school. Some teachers raped boys in that school. Regent brought a complaint of sexual harassment issue to the headmaster. But the headmaster thought Regent must be crazy to accuse respectable teachers. Regent, aged 12 or 13, ran away from school to avoid one male teacher's sexual advances. The headmaster did not allow Regent back into the school unless he could get a psychiatric report testifying that he was sane. Therefore Regent became a high school dropout. Regent also had some unfortunate family circumstances, which made everything more difficult. Regent's father died unexpectedly. His father was seeing a mistress, and died while visiting her. His mother did not know her husband was having an affair until the death took place. She was angry that he was going away on weekends without explaining. Regent's mother had already stayed in a hospital once for depression. She was not mentally strong enough to take care of her family. Regent's parents were both from wealthy families. In England in the upper class, men and women study art sculpture and poetry at university. They join elitist club at university. Regent's mother and father had met on an art course. As a widow, did not know how to take care of the family's finances. Regent at 12 or 13 felt like the man of the house, and wanted to protect his mother and two baby sisters. But Mr. Field, the teacher against whom Regent had tried to bring a complaint of sexual harassment, entered this young family to help him out. Regent did not like it, but could not stop Mr. Field. His mother soon fell in love with Field. The young Regent felt even more heartbroken as he saw his his younger sisters respecting Field and obeying him like a father. Mr. Field destroyed their family wealth by pressuring the widow to sell her home and buy a home in a small town. Soon the home they had sold for nothing became worth two million. Mr. Field, a gay man, was not bisexual. He did not reciprocate Anne Lindsay's affections. After doing damage to the family, Hugh dumped them and was not seen again. 
Regent said had no adult who could help him to get a psychiatrist to write a report about him so that he could get back into school. In his late teens, Regent felt he had no future. He traveled to Fiji and similar places. He overstayed his visa in Fiji. He worked illegally to support himself financially and slept in unusual places so that he could avoid paying rent. Regent thinks he was deported from Fiji. He was not sure of this or felt so ashamed of being deported that he could not admit it to himself. Regent said his mother may have paid for his ticket home. He does not know. On returning to London, he hated the idea of staying with his mother at the age of 19. Regent's mother was not competent to raise her children by herself. She could not cope with her own life. Regent had not finished school and could not get a job. He saw a psychiatric hospital as he walked around in London. He decided to knock on the door of the psychiatric hospital. He asked them if he could have free accommodation, there as he was. Homeless. Perhaps feeling hopelessness and bitter made the young man take such a step. The hospital staff said they would give him free accommodation, but he had to make a small sacrifice. Regent agreed. They said he would have to take only one small injection in his arm. He agreed. It was a mind-blowing injection. After that injection, Regent was so unwell, he had no choice but to remain in that hospital. Regent took several months to recover from the aftermath of that terrible injection. He stayed in that psychiatric hospital for six months. In this way, Regent was inducted into psychiatry before he turned 20. Initially, the psychiatric staff did not have a case against him. It was just the terms and conditions under which they provided free accommodation. But he became a victim of their exploitation. A psychiatric injection can be like a jolt to your nervous system and eventually this damage becomes permanent. If you lack the physical and mental energy to fight for your rights, and no close friends or family to fight for you, psychiatry becomes a life sentence. Regent was one of those to whom it also became a death sentence. He studied at Cambridge Polytechnic was fluent in Latin. Regent helped compile the Oxford Dictionary and his name is in the dictionary as Richard Lindsay. He had oratory skills and could attract crowds. Once upon a time, mental health staff who were taking care of my late friend Regent Exeter ordered police to run a helicopter to find him. Regent managed to escape from the overhead helicopter as they used infrared cameras to find him at night. He succeeded in cheating the infrared cameras by hiding in thick vegetation in a cemetery. Although he won this battle against the helicopter manhunt, he didn't win his war against them. As a result of all these abusive procedures, he lost his life. I know that people would not believe me. People would say if a helicopter search was ordered, there must have been a genuine reason. Human beings have advanced equipment at their disposal. It is possible they will use expensive equipment wantonly or to abuse an innocent person. When that happens, one expects there will be an inquiry. Regent was a gentle and kind-hearted man who would not hurt a fly. He was a fat ball of fun and never wanted suicide. He did run from mental health staff as they are despicable people. You, the reader may not agree with what I said above, and what I will say below. The people who requested a helicopter search had something very desirable attached to their bodies that made criticism and censure impossible. That desirable thing is the wonderful, marvelous, majestic, magnificent, munificent female genital.
Not only that, but these mental health staff were a case of putting a crown on a frog and calling it a king. If you had common sense, you would be shocked to know what kind of person had the right to command a squadron of men to run a helicopter. They are deficient in male intelligence and lack the mental faculty of judgment. In January or February 2014, Regent told me on the phone that his doctor was giving him a new preparation that was making him worse. I asked him to change his doctor. In the UK, they give everyone free treatment under the NHS. They assign you a doctor's practice. You can change your doctor if you want. There is no need to complain or give reasons. You can just go to another medical practice and ask them if they can register you as their patient. Naturally, I asked Regent if I could change his doctor. Regent resisted. He said, and quote, I will stick to Dr. B. He's a nice man. And quote, I felt very bad later. I felt guilty that I had not forcefully changed his doctor. Once, which has to be 2012 or early 2013, when I visited Schiffnell, he had a nosebleed when he took me to a restaurant and fell off his high chair, banging his head on the floor. But I didn't know till a couple of years after his death that nosebleed was a symptom of high blood pressure. I had not known that fat people get high blood pressure, which is related to the heart, and will kill them. I had taken him home and he said nothing was wrong. Because he sometimes had a nosebleed, and it was all connected to his drinking. I had no idea that. He had high blood pressure because he did not know it himself.